after starting the year with a lot of rough losses. I think we should Don't talk about that Don't first. Don't do that. I have a lot. <laughs> I think we should talk about that. Like the challengers get kind of full, but they're not like. Whoa. I feel they're more like. Whoa, Justin. My bad. I can't go in once in a while. I would know anything. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Change World Podcast. Uh, we zoomed in today just because we're all in different countries and uh yeah it's been a little bit challenging trying to get some guests on so yeah we're on zoom this week hope um hope everybody's doing good and um yeah thanks for watching so i guess we can start with a little bit of an update you want to go first evan why don't you let people know where you're at and uh no 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 <laughs> this man jody has gone three weeks in a row Three finals, one, one title. After starting the year with a lot of rough losses, I think we should Don't talk about that first. Don't do that. I don't have a lot. <laughs> I think we should. Losses. I think we should talk about that first. I think we should. Um, first of all, congratulate you. I think that that's that's a very good effort. The last few weeks, very consistent. Thanks. Three weeks, two different partners, and a title to end the last one. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. I think Evan was a part of that. Evan was one of the one of the partners. So yeah, I brought I brought Evan with me. I brought him with me. Yeah, I, I, to... I, I, I couldn't get the title though, but <laughs> I was a long for the Evan. <laughs> Congrats to Evan as well. But um, yeah, I would like to say well done. I think the year for you didn't start great. You had a, like a, quite a few close losses and rough losses kind of early in tournaments. And then with the schedule being kind of rough, not being able to play, then going to Tunisia, starting rough there. Turn it around and then eventually having this good run now. I feel like a year or two ago, that kind of started the year would have shaken you a lot more. So I yeah. wanted to just say, uh, I don't want to use that word, but I guess I'll say it. Yeah, I guess I'm proud of the effort that you're making. I think you've, you've done a good job so far. So Wait, far can you say year. it again? Why didn't you no, want to use it. the word proud? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, no, pride is not that. really the thing I wanted to say, but I think uh, for sure, very well done. And I, I hope you, I know you have, you're in the semis now there in Jamaica too, right? Yeah. So yeah, the job yeah. is not done. I guess we're not celebrating, but I just wanted to acknowledge like the, the efforts of part this year. I think you've done a good job. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I feel like it's funny. If, if I played the matches at the beginning of the season with the calmness that I feel now, they would have turned because they were like... Okay. I don't know, I began in Wesley Chapel at the beginning of the year. We're up a set, and I think I served for it in the first round that we lost, and that team ended up making the finals. So mm -hmm. in those kind of situations, I'm doing a lot better now. Not that it goes my way all the time, but like, like for example, today, we won the first, had a bunch of opportunities to take the second, didn't, and then end up playing a bad game at 5-6, lose the second, but I still felt super calm about the way the third was going to go. Whereas a couple of months ago, like in Wesley Chapel, you can see how stressed I was to be in a third set tie break. So, yeah, if I played some of those matches the way I play, the way I approach it now, it would have been a little bit different. But um, what's changing your started, approach? You think? Yeah, I think it started to turn in, in Tunisia. To be honest, like we put in Josh and I put in some performances where I felt like I was managing the match a little bit better. Like I was using the conditions to my advantage, like with the wind and that sort of stuff in some of the matches. And I think we problem solved pretty well. And that kind of gave me a little bit of confidence. And then, I mean, Evan can attest to this in, in Jalapa, the first two matches were not pretty. Like we had a lot of back and forth, like a lot of breaks both ways and that sort of stuff. Um, but, but in that, like we found systems that worked for us. So that kind of gave me confidence too. And then when I, by the time I got to last week in in Via Hermosa, it was a lot better. Like I was pretty clear with how I how I want to play. And I feel like I've been in sort of a in the last three weeks, like if I'm playing four matches a week, um, only three days off, it's like I almost don't even want to practice. Like I it, it, the days that I have off, it's like like now I'm warming up serves, I'm hitting like no more than ten serves on each side. Like it's cause I've played so much tennis that I feel like the match, I still feel like I'm in a match. You know what I mean? Like, it just, okay. it doesn't end. So, it's kind of cool. Like, it's it's not like an expectation thing, but it's like a calmness. It's like, I've, I've gotten out of trouble in the last couple of weeks and I feel like I can get out of trouble again. And 
it helps me approach some of the tough moments with a little bit more conviction than I was before. So I, I would say that's pretty much the biggest difference is has been. And I don't know how many tournaments it is now, but I want to say it's got to be like six tournaments in the last seven weeks, something like that, or five or six in yeah, the last... Yeah, that sounds right. Because I went three in oh, Tunisia, one week off, and then this is my third one in be, a row again. Yeah. yeah, so six and seven weeks. How How is the mental emotional battery are you still as excited I'm to play tired. or is it more yeah yeah i'm still excited to play like i was dreading the singles to be honest i had zero fun the last two days even though like i won a run in the main i played a wild card like a jamaican player here i think i was pretty fortunate with the draw compared to some of the other players in the draw um but like not easy conditions like playing a local here the crowd was against mm-hmm. me and uh, the conditions was good windy rest. and stuff <laughs> it was rough it was rough <laughs> but um but yeah i made it out but i had zero fun even though i i passed the first round i had zero fun and then today i played zeke and again had zero fun but I, all i can think about is the doubles i just want to play doubles like from the minute i got here i was like i wanted to play you know what i mean so that's mm. i think it's a good sign like in the past sometimes i'll be maybe a little bit not, maybe not scared but anxious you know like i want to get going yeah um but now it's like I'm excited, you know what I mean? Like I, I already can't wait to go and play tomorrow. We were talking about um your whoop. It would show the stress level during matches. Yeah. Has it been lower? Lower this I last think a little bit. couple of weeks? Yeah, really? yeah. And and also last week in Mexico was you played there last year how hot it was, like in mm-hmm. Pierre Hermosa. Like it's humid. It's it's covered, indoor covers was humid. And then here it's not as like it's very hot outside for sure. Like people are dying, mm-hmm. but it's more like the sun is burning your face. But there, it's yeah. like you actually die. Like it's actually horrible. Yeah. There. So uh, that's probably more of it than actually the emotional stress. I said emotional stress is a little bit less than it was. I remember, like in in uh, for those of you who don't know, the Whoop band has like a uh, strain scale. Like the worst is like twenty one. So, like, for example, in preseason, when I was pushing my body really hard, I was going, like, 18, 19 on a long day, you know? And then I played a doubles match in the beginning of the year, just a regular doubles match, nothing too crazy. And my strain was, like, like my stress and strain were, like, all the way up to 18, 19. So, but it's not like that now. Like, I, I've calmed down a little bit, I think. <laughs> you think- During tournaments, do you – oh. Go ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. I was say during yeah. tournaments, do you do you still check the how well you slept and how well you recovered? Bro. Yeah, I do. I bro. feel like that would get in my head. <laughs> so since I came here to Jamaica, I'm staying at a friend's house, and my recovery has never been higher. Like it's crazy. <laughs> like like the room here, the first night, ninety eight percent recovery. Second night, eighty seven percent recovery, and then the singles matches it was seventy two percent recovery, and then sixty nine percent recovery, and that's way higher than than normal. Like in Tunisia, my recovery was all below fifty percent every night. Like it was horrible. Did not like Tunisia at all. Crazy. Yeah. And with the stress level being lower, is there something in particular that you've done? Like is there like a routine before matches or something? I mean, you're thinking about or is it just chilling. having the clarity and confidence with the with your partner I'm that chilling bro you I'm just... chilling like before the match today like we warmed up uh oh i played singles and then i played singles at 10 right this is today and i played for like just over an hour i got destroyed but it was like hot and i was tired then i had to sit around all day so at one point i took a nap and then i remember josh wanted to hit so i hit with josh a little bit and then we had like a little bit more of a break. And in that break, Josh is like doing like dynamic warm up and stretches and stuff. And I'm just chilling. Like, a, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, a, I'd, I'd rather not get too pumped up before the match. Uh-huh. You know? So you I've kind of found, way you found a mood that works for you. Yeah. Yeah. At least at this, like at this even, point in time, this isn't working for you. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Until it stops working and I have to find it. Yeah. <laughs> start breaking rackets again or something. Yo, I've not broken one racket all year. How good is that? That's well done. That's a different story. <laughs> yeah. Real talk. But like Evan could tell you in, in Mexico, it was not pretty. Bro, the matches, I've never played matches like that in Mexico. Like the crowd Maybe. was going insane. People oh. like screaming. Like, have you ever played matches like that? Like in on the tour? Like um on the tour where they're like that against probably not. I mean, maybe the some of the stadiums that like the challengers get kind of full, but they're not like 
Whoa. I feel they're more like. Whoa, Justin. My bad. Okay, I wouldn't know anything about that. Sorry. Subtle, subtle flex right there. <laughs> but they, but they, I feel like they're pretty, like, they're usually pretty, they'll have their favorites, but they'll still cheer for you. But when we play in Jalapa, they're pretty heavily on on the Mexican against side, them. as they should be. Yeah. But wasn't um, it cool? Wasn't us. it cool? By the end of the week, like we had like a handful of people cheering for us. Like, come on, Joe, yeah, come we on had a we us. had a couple of people that liked us. Like one of the guys gave us some. He had like a bakery or something. Gave us some bread. Came to the match, like cheering us on. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, we had. I mean, some of the other players were some of our friends, like Andre, Tahid, Oscar were there. They're helped cheering for us, and then Andre <laughs> <laughs> Andre started barking. I saw that. <laughs> the, the vibes look crazy over there. And then, and yeah. then the the once the other team won a point, the the crowd started barking as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yo, in like, that match, in that match, we won the first, and then I don't remember how bad we lost the second. Maybe it was one break or something. But like, I, we might have been down for like some of the second. Like we were losing for a while in the second, and the crowd was just getting more and more into it. And eventually, by the end of the second and beginning of the third. Oscar, Andre, Tahid, they were like, yeah, we have to like pick it up. You know, it's like all yeah. against them. So then they started making noise and then the crowd started competing against them. So it was like, I prefer that though. Like, I preferred at least having yeah. three or four people against like what, 200 people or something, like something crazy. So yeah, us, us against uh, the world kind of. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> but then at, at the end of it, like we shook hands and then they clapped us off and stuff. So it was cool. Yeah. And were there any vibes in the next tournament? We had most or no? Yeah, they were. I mean, early in the we played all of our matches on the back on the outside court. Like we didn't play any matches on center court. And then mm. we played the final obviously on center court and it was a pretty decent crowd. Like not as big as Jalapa, but like a decent crowd. And then obviously we won this time. Like Evan and I lost, but the second week we won. So then now people came and took a bunch of pictures with us and that sort of stuff. So that was cool. Like Mm. I don't know. These people don't know who we are, and they'll probably never look us up or anything ever again. But like in that <laughs> moment, we were we were like superstars no. level. Yeah, Better pretty city. cool. Yeah, yeah. But then it was like the biggest grind of life to get out of Mexico. We get home. It's like after eleven, mm. and we book flights. Right, so we book a flight, three hundred dollars from Via Hermosa to Mexico City. What? So much? Just hold on, right? Three hundred dollars. We booked the flight. We only get like three hours sleep because we have to wake up at three a.m. to get to the airport to fly at six. Right? Mm -hmm. We get to the airport. First of all, we get to the airport at like three fifty, and the gates close. The airport's closed. We can't get in, so we have to stand outside mm -hmm. the gate of the airport for ten minutes until they open the gate. <laughs> so we're the first ones in the gate. We get to the front desk at Aero Mexico, and they say. For domestic flights, you have to pay for your bags. I have the podcast bag and my suitcase. $150. Stings. Stings. So I paid $150. Bro, the flight, the, the American paid. Airlines, the American Airlines flight, bro, it's been dead. I made $450 last week. Like dead. So then now to get from Mexico City to Miami, Miami to Jamaica was $600. I spent almost $1,000 just to get just from to get the it. last tournament to this tournament and I only made like Thank God you have houses. Bro, it's amazing. Mine is, mine it's is amazing. well at that price. Yeah, real talk. Yo, it's amazing <laughs> actually to have housing, like to be able to eat a meal and like, wow, I just saved 10, $15, you know, <laughs> to sleep <laughs> like in my own room, uh, in, in like a comfortable bed and stuff. Like last week we were sharing a room, three of us in one hotel room. So, yeah. We're just in gone. There we go. Oh. Yeah, but that's good, man. Keep up. Keep up the good work. Good luck tomorrow. Appreciate it. Evan, <laughs> talk to the people, man. Oh, <laughs> I mean. The motherland. <laughs> life is all right. This is not my motherland, technically, but um, I'm in Taiwan. I'm in Taipei. For, I played a challenger this week, and I go to China um, tomorrow for, for some 25K. But yeah, I'm over in Asia. I like it over here. It's fun. So how many more Don't. weeks is it? Um two for sure in China, the 25Ks. And then I think they have 
I don't know how many they had, but they had at least two, I think two in Korea, two 15s right after. So I guess it'll just depend if I want to stay, if I'm mentally good to stay in Asia <laughs> or I need to go home. But uh, but two more for sure. Two more. Are you going to do a vlog day or what? Which pressure on the mind? We need a vlog day. Hey, Dude, hey comment, comment down it... below if you think Evan needs to do a vlog day in Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess if you want to comment that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like Asia. I like being in Asia. It's fun. So the food is good. Yeah. Just the food, huh? A little bit, a little bit of sight, a little bit of sightseeing, but yeah. Ah, uh, sights, yeah, I like that too. The man goes sightseeing uh, and he's not blogging anything, zero. <laughs> but then we'll see I'm on bad. his Instagram story, he's having it's... nice meals. Night Where's market. That? Uh, no, I went with who did I go with the night market with? I went with B Hall Brandon. I Shout thought Beho was eating at Roadhouse. No, no, no. The one night I got him out of Texas. He was eating Texas Roadhouse every single night here. But the one night I got him out of Texas Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse in Taipei. In Taipei, yeah. No we're way. like we're like in like pretty much the center of the city. So there's like a bunch, like so many restaurants. But they have Texas Roadhouse like and he chose over in like there. one of the, the big malls. He just... Because I was saying, oh, we should go somewhere else to eat. He's like, I just want chicken and rice. If you can find just chicken and rice, it's fine. But I was like, you can't oh, go whatever. Wrong, chicken so he and just rice. Went to... Yeah, so he went to Texas Roadhouse every night. Like, we would walk. First, the beginning of the tournament, we'd, we'd walk to the same area. But then he'd go to Texas Roadhouse. I'd go somewhere else. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, and, That's the way it and, <laughs> and, and the one time, yeah, the one time we got him out of there, we went to one of the night markets and they have like the stalls with like each stall has like a different food okay. unreal do you like yeah. it mm. yeah i think so liked it enough <laughs> ate it <laughs> how do you do he was speak english out there how do you guys communicate with people out there they speak evan, speaks in here. evan speaks a native tongue yeah but like hold, yeah. walking around what's he oh Is they uh, some people some people speak like they speak english a little more here than like in china i think for sure uh, they speak english in roadhouse but sure. um yeah but uh <laughs> yeah i help translate when i can okay yeah True. should we um should uh, we do some fan questions before we get to fire answer it again thoughts yeah. Let's do. Uh, oh, am I bad? Sorry. No, no, you're good, bro. <laughs> no, no, please. Run the Listen. run the fan question. Nah, what what no, 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 no. You're striking. You're, you're striking again, huh? <laughs> Don't talk to me, dog. It's okay. We could. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that was poor. That was poor. That was poor. We That's could poor. wrap this whole thing up. Actually, we could just. <laughs> we could just. <laughs> we could just call it a night. I'll let you sleep before this anyway. I'll go to bed. I think it's better. <laughs> no, no, I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry. That's on me. That's poor from me. That's cool, and the man, I'm, I'm happy how he's doing well, all this stuff. And the man didn't ignore me. That's crazy. You know what's right, funny? You, you, you know use the P funny? word and then he won't even ask him how he's yeah, doing. Yeah, the P word. The P word. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Is Justin, Justin, I was messaging him like either yesterday or the day before. And I was actually telling him that I'm pissed that he's still hurt. Like, it's not like, oh, I see you playing again. Oh, I'm happy. It's like, no, dog. Like, I'm tired of this shit. Can you just please just come back and play? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, imagine how Justin feels. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, there's a light at the end of the tunnel right now. Um, each day on court has been a bit better, so the pain has been less and less each day. I think today I played about an hour and fifteen minutes, probably about eighty percent intensity, which is pretty good. So it's going down. Like you, every day you play, the pain feels the pain less. Pain is less. Yeah, uh, like. I have a little bit of, let's say, soreness after I play, but the next day I can actually, I can handle more pass. Um, <laughs> I can play a little bit, a little bit stronger every day, and I can play for a little bit of a longer time. So that's good. Today I was able also to serve and hit volleys without much pain. I think I had a little bit of pain on the forehand volley, but the serve, nothing. Forehands and backhands, pretty much nothing. Do you, are you um, still holding different grip? No, back to normal, which is surprising. Um, but good, because like maybe three days ago, I couldn't actually hit with my normal forehand grip. But it's, yeah, it seems to be like every day is a little bit better. 
So, so I don't want to make any predictions or big claims, but I'm happy with what today was. So we'll Is it on see. specific I, shots I that, that you tomorrow. feel it? Yeah. At first, it was a lot on the forehand. And I wouldn't even try to hit volleys and, and surfs because just the way the racket is angled in my hand and the ridge is kind of on it. But now, off the ground, I don't have any pain on forehand or backhand. Uh, backhand volley and slice is actually nothing. Forehand volley, I kind of feel it sometimes. I would imagine if your hand um, is facing this way, it's easier. Like the pressure is yeah. The pressure is not. It's on. It's on the. Back, it's on the side. Yeah. The more down here as opposed to up here. But the forehand volley, I feel it, especially if I, like, if I take the ball to the natural angle and I go cross, I feel it less than if I try to push it that way for whatever reason. Um, overheads, I, okay, serve today actually serve like seventy five percent speed, full regular grip, everything, no pain. I had any pain on one serve. Maybe one kick serve, or maybe a little, maybe too ambitious. Um, but yeah, happy with the way the last two days have gone. Uh, playing more than an hour. I forgot what humidity was and heat from the sun. I've been in the gym. <laughs> I've been indoors, so it's it's a little different. Like twenty minutes into practice, I'm I'm tired. Like I feel it. But That's what, um, what time is it now? It's almost. It's just after ten, maybe ten twenty. You were sleeping already. Uh, yeah, I was I was struggling. When you said let's record an hour later, I was I had taken up. Um but yeah. Happy. Blessed back outside doing what I like to do. So hopefully we can stay on this track. Are you um, sleeping more than normal now? Like now uh, that you're sleeping back easier. Playing? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like way easier. Like now I just go in the bed and when I smell the pillow, I I'm It's out. great, huh? Yeah, it's the best. I miss that feeling. That's the best. <laughs> it's like, it's like a good. It's, it's a good tire. You know. Yeah. You been up early every day too. Gym in the morning, I'm guessing. Or you train in the morning now. I do gym before, and then I hit, and then when I have cardio, I do that after. But yeah, actually, very surprising week because when I first was hitting, after the last injection, I wasn't too optimistic about where I was going. I didn't say much to anyone. I just kind of compensated, switched to the forehand grip. I was hitting with like almost like the, not quite Eastern, but something like that, which is not really how I play. <laughs> um, I was just hoping that it would just go down and it has. So yeah, fingers crossed it stays, stay there. True. That's good. It's good, to, yeah. good that you're back on the right track. I'm sick of, yeah, of, sure. of this, like, you're staying at home all day long. Like, brother, go play some tournaments, though. Get out the house. Touch yeah, I would, like to, I would like to be out there at some point next month. would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, am I allowed to do some questions, questions now? Yeah. Am I allowed to? I'm going to go to bed, though. <laughs> now that that's over. <laughs> hey, 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 chill, <laughs> out, chill, out. <laughs> chill out, chill out. Um, the first one was... Let's go with this one's from Cheyenne. And the question is, Evan, why don't you answer this one? I think it's going to be great for you to answer this one. What do you guys do to properly maintain your physical health and recovery when competing week after week? Evan. Uh, <laughs> stretch. <laughs> stretch. <laughs> stretch and sleep. Put your legs up. Some Normatec. Roll out a little bit if you're really feeling it. What's the normal? Is that what you do? People you roll out? Uh, once in a while, yeah. The normal tech, I actually have them right here. Hold up. No free promo. The reason hey, we are sponsor. not sponsored by this them. isn't this is, but they're the, the boots, the compression boots. Uh, oh, yeah, we aren't sponsored by whoop either. So just <laughs> that was not promo. Um, do those Scoop, stretch, a, stretch a little bit. Drink a little bit of water. The reason why Would I you think it's funny. Are you are you good at the that stuff? The physical no. recovery stuff? No. Okay. <laughs> that's why that's why I thought it was funny that Evan answered because Evan has a history of like never getting hurt but always being in good shape, like running and all this stuff. It's like the Dude, I got hurt, hurt this so. year. 
Okay, but that was like, like you, no recovery is gonna fix though. that. You know what I mean? Like you slipped and fell yeah. on, on <laughs> wet court. I should have compression. I should have compression booted the night before. I wouldn't have got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> to but to no. further answer the question, I believe like everyone's different. So like Evan probably does. I would say less of the recovery stuff just because I guess he's never really had any issues. But like a lot of guys have their own specific routines, like their routines before they play like their mobility routines and then the routines at the end of the day like they cool down and stretch in and then some guys travel with the boots like what evan has um ice bath when when they can like to me that's that's my favorite uh recovery is ice bath but we don't always have access to ice bath but yeah a lot of it just has to do to be honest even more than that is is like nutrition and hydration i would say like hydration is the worst like if you don't yeah. hydrate properly you'll be Done the, the problem matches. is that it's it's everything. I think you need to do all, all of it. Just do it That's all. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. You can eat as well as you want, but if you don't do your mobility and stuff and then your hips get tight, you can't move. And <laughs> yeah. That's that. That's I true. think yeah. You have to kind of have a system that you can follow like day in and day out. And I think that's the best way. I think, yeah, it can be a little bit different for everybody. But you have to kind of hit these certain components or you kind of, especially when you're in tough conditions. Like if you, if you play in South America in the summer or in the Caribbean or in these U.S. like middle of the country states and it's the summer. The Midwest is the degrees. worst. Oh, my word. Yeah. You're playing in these, in these climates and you aren't eating and hydrating well. I don't care how fit and how flexible you are. You <laughs> will probably pass out. And not make it through the tournament, through the matches. So really? I, do, I do take you my, my hydration. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be hydrated. Yeah, do it all. Next question. So this one's from Brian. A uh, couple of questions. What are your thoughts on Andy Murray switching rackets? And thinking big picture, some of you guys have changed rackets in the last 12 months. What makes players decide to change rackets? And what and to what extent does it affect a professional player? Who would like to take this one, gentlemen? What are your thoughts on the new on the new racket, Evan? On Murray's new racket? Yeah. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Whatever works. If that was me, I'd be like, damn, I won so many grand slams with the other one. Why would I switch? But um Andy's coming up on the end of his career now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um so I guess I guess he's always looking for something to improve his game a little. Obviously he's not moving as well as he was when he was in his prime yeah so maybe a racket that would give him more sure they the e-zone gives him more power than the head racket he had so yeah maybe he's trying yeah, to also, compensate a little bit for the movement with some ball quality like some power or speed mm -hmm. yeah and i'm both. pretty sure it looked like the 100 i'm not sure that's not a fact but look at the 100s maybe like also, it'll be a little bit more open string pattern. Maybe get a little more spin. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe he could do a little bit more with the forehand. That would be my assumption. Uh, but, yes, interesting to see. Let's see if it does anything good for him or if he feels like at some point he wants to go back to his his original his original uh, setup. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It's Why do you switch rackets, Jody? It's funny because I feel like a lot of the guys that I've seen in Futures and Challenges, they change rackets quite often compared to what we see at the top. Like, I'm actually curious about if these guys at the top switch as often as the like our peers, you know what I mean? Because you see them always with the same racket, painted with the same racket and stuff, like the top pros. Like, I'm curious about how often, how, like, how long they actually have been playing with that racket. If it's the same racket that they've been using for years, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's that often because whenever they do make a tweak to a racket, it's always like kind of big news. Yeah, I don't know if you remember what. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wonder how much, how many times do we don't know that something like that has happened because they just paint the racket the same the next yeah, year, like, you know? There have been some subtle ones too, like Djokovic, I think he changed his racket from like an 18, 20 to like an 18, 19 string pattern, like something like that. We probably mm -hmm. wouldn't have noticed. I heard about that, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe in the office they do, they do a little bit of tweaking. Maybe depending on what they're trying to accomplish or they think they can do a little bit better. But yeah, who knows? 
I'm sure they they consider these things periodically. Yeah. The problem is, is like, there's so many variables that go into these things. Like, you have to think about the stiffness of the rocket, the size of the frame, the size of the grip, the type of grip you use, the shape of the grip you use, the the string pattern, what string you use, like what tension you string it at. Um, what am I missing? The the weight, the balance, like this. That's at least ten that I just rattled off there. Like it's so many differences, and then you go into like different conditions. Like what if you do all this stuff and you're practicing on a hard court, and then you go to clear, like fuck, I can't even get the ball past the service line. I need to go back to the other racket. You know what I mean? Like it's so much. So I think you can get lost in this process, this racket process. I wonder what has like a bigger effect, like if if changing strings or racket is more is more like of a difference maker. Do you, you, yeah. you think you... this actually reminded me one more thing about the Murray thing. Like you could also potentially his body too. Like maybe it could be injury. It could be like one thing is maybe that racket is hurting him for some for whatever reason. Like that could also be a reason for him to want to change beyond just performance. Like maybe actually physically it might help him to get more power because and that's also the reason why people change rackets, I believe. But I don't know how good the, got, the Yonex is actually for your arm. But. He was also hurt, you no, know, just after Miami. Like, he twisted his ankle. This yeah. will be his first event back. This is Challenger, I think. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So I wonder yeah, if yeah. he's on his mind for a while already or just having this time but, hurt. He just wanted to experiment. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I, sorry, I cut you off. What was your question just now? Mine? Yeah, you asked me something and I went back to Murray. I forgot what it was. Sorry. Oh, why you uh, changed? Why? Yeah, yeah, because that was other part of the question. Like, what what goes into that for you when you when you switch rackets, for example? I don't know. Like, I don't know how much I necessarily agree with the feel argument about it. Like, I think you get used to whatever you're playing with. So, I believe it's more important to to judge like. The performance of the racket than how it feels in your hand because i don't know just because something feels good doesn't mean it's for you you know what i mean like i can let's say i've been hitting my forehand wrong for five years it feels a certain way and then now that i make a correction and i do it right the ball is responding the right way but it feels weird it's not is it wrong no it's not wrong i'm doing it the right way now and it's the result is good but it feels weird because i'm not used to it so like I kind of believe that you're going to get used to whatever whatever's in your hand. Um, So you should probably judge the, the ball more than the... Evan's not buying it. <laughs> no, no. Evan's be... Evan like, is not to buying feel, it. Yo, he wants to, like, <laughs> make sure it feels good. Yeah, because I feel like... I, I can see what you're saying. I think it's a little bit of both because I feel like when you... When it gets to let's say it gets to a moment in the match where you're nervous or you're whatever, you have to feel like you're, you have to feel like the racket's going to do what you feel like is going to feel good and what you want it to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, probably a bit of both, I think, in my opinion. Yo, you know, I was actually having a conversation today with a coach, right? And this is what's so interesting about tennis is it's, crazy individual like we were talking about coaching right and i was saying that in a way like it's all an experiment like all an experiment like for example chris was telling me on my backhand return so i played a do side and on my backhand return chris is telling me um like when they serve body backhand to me to hit the inside of the ball like in in what world do you ever hit the inside of the ball on a ground stroke if i hit the inside of the ball it's going to be spinning this way you know but when I try to hit the inside of the ball, I get my body out the way and I still hit it like top spin forward, but it's, I'm trying to hit the inside of the ball. So his direction to me is, is technically incorrect, but the result it's is nonsense. Correct. You know what I mean? <laughs> Becky, I didn't say yeah, it. I know what you mean. Um, so that's what I feel probably with rackets too. It's like, it's so individual, you know, like it's, literally whatever works like wh whatever logic works for you is the one you should use so i can come out and i can say oh feel doesn't matter 
all that matters is performance. But then you can speak to someone else who like, oh, the racket must feel good in my hand for me to be able to use it. And that could that could work for them. So like realistically, it's like literally whatever works for you is what you should do, you know? Mm-hmm. I agree. I think I think some of the pros as well, I forgot to mention change rackets because of the contracts, maybe. Yeah, good point. Um, they got business out there. We don't have business yeah. down here, but like, <laughs> top of the game is some business decisions. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just want to add that in. Your, All right, next, anything next question is from Sebastian Bing. Where is the best? Where is the best place to go to get your first ATP point? We're out of the weakest Bro, The truth of the matter is, it is like. It's the practice court, like get better. Like if you become good enough, then you'll probably be able to win matches at whatever level that you're playing at. Like Damn, that was a deep answer. He said the practice score is where you get the best points. Evan, he is good, huh? He's good. Yeah, 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 he's, <laughs> he's good. good. He's good. <laughs> no, because you can you can go <laughs> to these places. Where is it? Where it's supposed to be weak, like Tunisia or Egypt or I don't know wherever Congo or Rwanda or whatever, and you can you can pull up there and play somebody who's very good, and you can maybe get lucky and get a and get an easy draw, but that point that you pick up won't mean anything if you can't keep doing that. So I think at the end of the day, chasing a point or two is is a worthless pursuit, in my opinion. So I don't think that it that it really matters if you don't have yeah. the level to actually win at, let's say, a 15k or a 25k level. Then, it, yeah, if you chase a point, and you get a point. Luckily, randomly somewhere, it doesn't mean it doesn't make you a better player than you were before. Yeah, you know, Taylor actually changed my opinion on that. My first year playing, because after my after college and I went to the dance, my first year playing, I was like, I really, I really wanted a point. You know, that was kind of my mentality. And I, I didn't necessarily, I wasn't thinking where am I going to go to get a point, but I was like, I just want a point, you know? And Taylor was like, he changed that very early. He was like, oh, what are you talking about a point? Like, we're not, we're not here practicing every day, all these hours for a point. Like you need to set, yeah. set your goals a little bit bigger. So maybe that's Believe also me, a, <laughs> yeah, so that's also like a shift in mentality Sebastian that you can have as well like don't set yourself short like don't just say oh I want one point and where would I go for one point like work work hard and, and like set your dreams bigger than one point and then you know it's like what do they say shoot for the aim for the what and shoot for the what aim for the stars that was the worst sighting of a phrase I've ever heard in my life I didn't even shoot know shoot for was. the what and aim for the what how does it go, Justin? Aim through for the stars and land on the moon. Or... If you miss, you land on the you land on a cloud or some some garbage like that. <laughs> the moon or something. <laughs> Boom, yeah. Boom. So do that, Sebastian. Do that. Uh, we have another one from Jonathan. Aim it's actually higher. the same thing from before. Um, from interested in here from Jonathan. Interested in hearing about your thoughts on Andy Murray's recent racket change from head to Yonix. We already covered it. Um, this doesn't seem that common at the top level of tennis, like what I said. Um, could sponsorship deals be holding players back from trying all rackets and getting the most out of their game? For example, should Nadal try Wilson or Technifiber racket to extend his career? Nadal shouldn't try anything. <laughs> Nadal has won like 21 Grand Slams, bro. It's nothing to try. <laughs> okay. If anything, I think Nadal has tried literally everything yeah. he could possibly try. <laughs> and if he needs to change, then I don't know what. But I don't know I about the sponsorship right. deals thing. Like, I don't think that's necessarily stopping the pros. Like, if they felt like they wanted to change, I think they would figure out a way to change. Now you like, see it often. They like. For example, when Rublev switched ahead, he was just playing with a blocked out head racket for like a year. Yeah. Or for like a few months and then he switched. Yeah. Like if they want to switch, they will. They'll just block the racket out and not put a stencil in. Yeah. I feel like this and, thing yeah. is like rackets are so important that like once a tennis player has decided that 
they want a new record that they're going to change there's no stopping them like yeah it this is the reason that they win or lose matches you know so they're not gonna i don't know stay in a deal when they're gonna lose matches you know what i mean i believe they'll figure yeah. out a way to get out of it so i don't necessarily think that this would stop stop them from changing um the next one is from cool prowess which young caribbean players are you excited about for the future well, that depends. Define young. Yeah, that's that depends on what the definition of young is. Uh, I will say that it's pretty cool that we have some guys that are coming out of college, that are in college, and well, they're in college right now, like John Chin and Kaipo, um, in college right now, playing this these futures in Jamaica. I think and Trey Trey Mallory too from Bermuda. I think Kaipo just graduated. So Kaipo is just done, but Trey and John are probably still in school. And I think these three guys, like, I don't know if excited is 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 the word, but like it's just nice to have more Caribbean guys that are able to compete at the pro level because obviously they all have have what it takes to win matches at this level. Some of them are, are already doing it. So I would say that's good. Um, but besides that, I don't know much about the younger generation just because I don't play in the Caribbean that often. I'm not around. Um, yeah, I'm not around the junior programs to know what we have coming up. So, but it's hard. Caribbean tennis is not that big of a community. So, so that answers that. <laughs> Nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Okay. Let's go to. Tell me about the the doubles experiment so far, bro. Have you followed it at all, or you not watching any tennis right now? I haven't had any feedback from. I haven't spoken to any of the guys who actually played. To know, like honestly, in the last like three weeks, I've not looked at anything. Like I've not watched any tennis. Like all of the matches have been for me have been in the afternoons. So like. The days are all very long. Like I wake up, eat, get ready for the day, and then I'm at the courts all day. So I have had no time to sit down. I mean, the matches are in the morning. They're, they're in Europe. You can instead yeah, of watching. Yeah, but I'm doing. But what I'm saying is, I'm not of, doing. Instead of watching, uh, what do you watch? You like to watch uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty clips. You could be watching tennis. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't been doing that. That's the point that I've been making to you. I have not been doing that. Seriously, you want me to go to my screen time? I can show my screen time, I actually time, don't care that much. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. But you know who actually watches Call of Duty too? Andre Ilagan. So shout out to him. That's a real one right there. Also watches Call of Duty. But, so um, sick. Yeah, but I... Yeah, I haven't been following up with the doubles thing. So I don't know how it turned out. I just know that they were very concerned. Doubles players were very concerned about how it was going to be executed at the beginning. So... Any of you guys watching any tennis, the clay court swing, or keep it up on any of the? I saw Tabilo is in the semis of. Uh... Yeah, that's crazy. What Rome? Tabilo's in the semis. Jared's in the semis. Jared beat City Pass today in three sets. It's another. So they have two Chileans in the semis there. That's pretty crazy. But I feel like this is the first time in a lot of years that I can remember. The French Open looking so open, like I don't, I don't really see a clear favorite. Yeah. For the title there, yeah. so I feel like you have. Who's Alcaraz winning the French? The, I don't know. I think it's random. I think it's, I think it's gonna be sort of random, because you have Sinner with like this, this hip random. issue. Sinner's hip is not great. Was oh, like he hurt? Been, like he had to pull out of some tournaments, and then like he's not. Oh, okay. He's like in and out. Alcaraz is in and out with his arm. Djokovic got hit in the head with a bottle and it looks like like he doesn't know how to play. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, that's cool. Ra that's uncalled for. Why is Djokovic catching <laughs> strays? What do you mean? For one bad match. <laughs> and it was no, probably because he had a the, damn concussion, brother. It's after the bottle thing. It's a joke. Sorry. <laughs> I think he's the good player all time. <laughs> but um, but he has, he has, let's say, struggled this year more than he has in any of the last probably 15 years so like a question oh. mark there can i apologize huh? by the way can i apologize by the way to who? to you about nadal so for those of you who don't know when nadal was playing barcelona uh i was like bro i like 
I don't really want to watch Nadal. Like it's so sad to see him not being the, the Nadal that we knew, like destroying everyone on clay at the French Open. So I was like, my thoughts was like, yeah, I'd rather him just not play anymore. Retire. So the memories, <laughs> the memories that I have of Nadal is that he's a dog, you know? Yeah. Um. So I was like, yeah, like this is not gonna happen. Like his level is not gonna come back. Uh, this is the end of it. Whatever. And then the man went on. What was it the next week? Uh, yeah, he beat them, you know. Yeah, he beat wrong. a couple I'm of so people. Wrong. And, I'm yeah. so wrong. Like I think, I think it's clear to see that he's not moving quite as well as he's used to, but he's still very good, especially on clay. I feel like he just knows what he's doing. Like he, he's. It's so hard to play with someone who has a forehand like that and a like that combination with the serve and forehand is just hard to break him. And when he once he pins you with that forehand into your backhand, and then he starts to open up with the line forehand and say, <laughs> "Not much you can do unless you're you're really good at executing." I think, but um, yeah, I I will I hope he can keep finding a little bit more form as the weeks go, and I want to see what he can do with the French. I don't know if he can win it. It'd be but, sick if he had a run. Yeah, I feel like it's hard to count these guys out. They just They've been so great for so long, you know. But yeah. I don't really know, man. Like you have, like Rublev was struggling a lot this year. Like he, I mean, probably had like four or five first round losses in a row since he had that uh, disqualification in Dubai when he was playing Bublik, and he ended up winning Madrid. And apparently he was like sick and like eating like mushy food because he couldn't, he couldn't really like chew and like digest the food. <laughs> So then he goes and from like a losing streak to like winning a Masters 1000. And you have like Casper Root good on clay. City Pass good on clay. Like, I don't know. Who would you put your money on to win? To win the French Open right now? We're not allowed to bet as tennis players. ITIA, if you're watching, we're not making bets. Who would you put your hypothetical money on? Hypothetically, if I had any money at all, because I don't. The money that I would put <laughs> would be on Sinner. You know, it's hard to bet against him. The man has been balling this this year. Yeah, but he hasn't finished tournaments recently. Yeah, true. But he has time. He'll figure it out. <laughs> When's the French? Two weeks. I think so. But yeah. there's Rome, and I think there's like Lyon, and then yeah, French maybe. See, Cheyenne, this is what happens when you don't take care of your body. You get hurt. So... <laughs> I'm sure he takes care of his body. <laughs> When you yeah. win every tournament that you play, and you have to play <laughs> five matches a week every week, that's what happens. Real. Who would you yeah. Who would you put your money on, Evan? Me. Pedro Kachin. Kachin. That's messed up. That's it. I'm joking. That's just from the you know the. Have you seen that book on their pocket? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um. <laughs> hey, you never know. He's playing well, but uh. I don't know. I'd take. Okay, I'll just throw Alcaraz in there. Just toss that one in there. Yeah, I'll just toss him in there. <laughs> you have any like dark horses? Like they have you have Tommy Paul and Semis in Rome. He can make a deep run. Yo, shout out to the to Tabilo, by the way. Did you would you have expected Tabilo to be in the semis of a Masters one thousand? Not at all. Not at Zverev. all. Wow, you think Zverev gonna win Rome? I mean, he can Wait, win Rome. Do you think Rome? he's gonna win? Do you think he's gonna win Roland Garros? Zverev? I don't know. Like, if there was a year he could, I win think a, he could win the French Open. It would be this year. I think. Then I say. Then I say earlier that I believe this is pretty close, or if not better than his best year on tour so far, like to date. Like, yeah, he's probably playing just as good, or even not, if not better than he was when he had his. Wait, best where did tour. he like? Where did he break his ankle? French against Nadal. Yeah. Oh, that was like in the, maybe Dude, in the maybe quarters or semis. Like. Maybe it's very could, could win it this year. You think it's meant, it's fate? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Bro, I don't know. Like, I just think... I think somebody that we don't expect is going to win it. Like, I I just think it's going to be what, like someone like Zvera, probably. A first-time Grand Slam winner? I think so. 
I don't know who, but I think it's just it's just it's just wide open, and I think that this is like this is the time for one of those one of those shock shock victories. Sin is gonna win it. You heard it here first. It's all scripted. All right. Yeah, Um, gonna win it. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Last question. This is from Matthew Morrison. What are your thoughts on serve placement? Justin, you can answer this one. What are your thoughts on serve placement? Like, where do you serve the most and why? So I guess, what's your thought process? My thoughts on, on serve? serve placement. Um, I think, for me personally, I like to open the court with myself. As much as I can. So like on the do side, I like to slice wide a fair amount. What does open in the like court mean? If people opening the know. court means getting the opponent outside of the basically getting the opponent outside of the singles line or doubles line so that there's space on the other side of the court to play into. So I, I like to make space with myself and I do that usually very pretty effectively with my slice serve on the deuce. I have a good kick serve on the add and I'm trying to find my phone on the first ball and Often, if I'm ahead, I will try to go to the open court. If not, I'm probably going to try to find the inside out position so I can attack with my forehand. Uh, but I think, in my opinion, it's important to have good wide serves because once you have a good wide serve, it opens up the T serves and it makes because, them more effective. Because if because they're serving the well to, wide, they have to cover. They, they have serve. to respect it. So they're gonna they're gonna give you a little bit more space, or at least they're gonna be leaning that way some more often, and then it opens up the tee. Um, but I think placement is is huge. Like I don't think like I think it's probably more it's definitely more important than than power. And when you have a well placed serve, what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you have a well placed serve, it sets you up well to have like combinations. So like. Even if you don't serve big, if you can find a like a very good spot consistently, you can kind of build a pattern out of that that scenario and probably get ahead most of the time. So I think yeah, when you're out there hitting serves, definitely focus on the placement more than the power. I would say. I think I mean like we talked about before, it's pretty individual. So like Justin specifically wants to open the court, but then what if? What if me as a return on the juice side love my my forehand return? Slice out wide to my forehand. What if that's my favorite return? You know, so also you have to be aware of what your opponent's doing. Um I don't know. What do you mean? Like if you hit if you hit spots with your serve, it doesn't really matter what the guy likes. I don't know. Do you have the greatest serve of all time? Are you serving like no, Nick Curious? But if, but if, but if, like if Nick hit, Curious hits if a I, spot as an ace, the ball's not coming back. But like, like realistically, you're not you going to just serve ace, lights out. Back. Yeah, but how often do I do that? I serve 10 aces a match. On a good Bro, day. I'm saying I'm if, you, if you hit a serve good slice serve, it doesn't matter how good the guy's forehand return is. I don't know. If you, if you, if you, aren't, if you, aren't, hitting, if you aren't hitting spots, like if your serve is going more into his slot, then okay. All I'm but saying if you're is, hitting a slice well, it doesn't matter. The only point that I was trying to make is you also have to be aware of what the opponent's doing. Like, if you're slicing out wide to my forehand and I'm cracking returns back, you're not going there the whole time. Now you're going to go T or you're going to go body. You're going to hit kicks. You're going to do different things. You're not going to just stick to that that one play. So the point that I was making was that, like, you also have to be aware of what the, the opponent's doing. If I'm standing way back, that opens up the angle. If I'm standing way close... Then there's no more slice wide angle. Now you want to bang them T. So the point that I was making is you also have to be aware of what your opponent's doing. Like don't just beat a dead horse if it's not going your way. So that's another thing yeah, to think, think about. Yeah, I think everything. I think within reason. I'm trying to speak within reason. That's like, all I was saying. Ob- like obviously, if the guy is standing with his his right foot outside the doubles alley, I'm not gonna slice the ball to him. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna so hit why the you coming at me I, just now? Like I was disagreeing. That's logic, though. That's logic. Like if yeah, a man is he... standing in, in a normal position and I hit a good slice serve, Justin, there's nothing he can do. Hey, buddy, Matthew Morrison asked us what we think about. I'm just telling you what we think about. Okay? <laughs> there you go, Matt. 
<laughs> Matthew, great question. You have me and Justin arguing on the podcast. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah. So we think about obviously our specific patterns, like what Justin said, serving out wide for him. Um, for me, my favorite serves on the juice side, T, and on the ad side, out wide. And normally, I don't have as much cut and kick on my serve. I'm pretty tall, and I can like get it in pretty big. So I like to take away time and rush the opponent that way and then look to serve to find forehands or to serve in volley or depending on what the opponent's doing. Unlike Justin, he's just going to do the same shit all day long, apparently. Um, but that's what I think about when I serve. You know what I mean? Do you have anything to add, Evan? Like like Rafa, hit the same over and over and over and beat everybody. <laughs> I think also to serve wherever you wherever you'll get your the first ball that you want you have a higher chance of getting the so if you i guess if you want like inside in forehand maybe you go kick out wide um on the ad side or something like that but just yeah. try to set up make sure it, it's a good combo is make sure it sets your game up well yeah so serve serve to receive the ball in the position that you are comfortable with on the first ball it's like yeah. if my backhand is my weakness, don't serve to where the first ball more than likely is going to come to be a backhand. You know what I mean? I agree with that. Um, so, yeah, good question there. I think that's all of the questions that we have. Uh, Let's do for some this main cues, Arthur. Some... Yeah. Let's get all into right. that you, and then we can. You know run. how it goes. I'll give you some things within a topic and then we get a rank them first, second, third. Let's go FaceTime, text, call. Where who? Call is... Oh, good question. Good question. Where who? <laughs> good question. This is for... Yeah, a, a friend. A friend, but maybe like not super close. Someone that you An know, acquaintance. but not... Yeah, yeah. That's text a better me. word. Acquaintance. Text me. Yeah, text me for real. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't getting on that phone call. Text Next me. one. FaceTime uh, is last if it's just an acquaintance. FaceTime is last. Yeah, 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 yeah. FaceTime are. But if we talk know, about, hey, you know what I'm saying? If we talk about one of them, you know what I mean? Hey, what about a, what about a love interest? FaceTime. Wait, how you rate it? FaceTime rings true at the top. Right? I'd say nah. FaceTime... What? What are you saying on the top? No, 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 no. Text. Justin hate phone calls. Text, 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 text me, text me, text me. Always text? With everyone? Text is one. Yeah, like, text okay, is one now for Justin I'm, for everyone. For me? Because it's like, it's like, uh, what would you want to have, have happen consistently? I would rather you mostly text me and then now and then <laughs> We can FaceTime or call. I don't you want scared, you to call are me. Are you scared we're building everything. a bad habit? No, that's definitely a bad habit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but I wouldn't want someone to FaceTime me every single day and feel comfortable how, enough how to we, just how, call my phone. How are we judging one? By the just pure amount? Or if you were to... like, What do you prefer? Like, what do you enjoy? I enjoy FaceTime. I like text. But Why are you like whispering? Why are you say with I like such a I like soft voice? <laughs> I prefer Sorry, to back bad. and forth on the text. <laughs> I'll, I'll go FaceTime, text, and then call. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think, yeah. I agree. Lock uh, it in. Next one. Text, text Lock one, FaceTime, in. then maybe call. All right. OG. OG chips. Lays. We got three flavors for you. Barbecue. Sour cream and onion, and the original. Barbecue. Barbecue is last. Barbecue is one. What? Barbecue, barbecue is, last. is one. Barbecue is barbecue, easy last. Bar- barbecue, sour cream and onion, then the original. Easy. I think yeah, so. I, think I haven't had sour cream logic. and onion in a long time though. But yeah, I think but they hit. They hit. They hit. Bar- I think one. sour cream. Sour hey, what cream about and salt and one. vinegar? Last garbage. I wouldn't even put that in this. You don't like game. salt and vinegar? I, it smells Damn. horrible. Can I can I do one? Well, I do so, one? The vin- so the vinegar is also 
once you finish eating it, like if Jody eats it, I can't be on Jody for the next 30 minutes. I'm going to smell <laughs> Jody. If you eat salt, the salt and vinegar chips, why am I catching I will strays? smell you. Why am if, I catching strays? If Samantha eats salt and vinegar chips, <laughs> Thank you. and she's oh, around man. me, <laughs> I am going to make sure I'm not close to Samantha because it smells horrible. The whole room oh, smells Sam? like vinegar. Our dog, Sam. Hey, hey, quick, quick. We have five minutes left. Jersey <laughs> Mike's. It'll be done. Jersey Mike's. It, no. Yeah. Go. Jersey Mike's. <laughs> uh, Jimmy John's. And Firehouse. But it took you guys a minute to ask this question. Um, Come on, it was off the cuff, brother. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, don't interrupt one. if you're not ready. Well, speak, one. bro. What? Jersey Imp- Mike's. Impossible. Impossible. Jimmy John's. Bro, is, I bro. eat Jersey Mike's the least. I don't know. Life. We don't get to oh, it. I didn't ask you what you eat the least or most. I asked you what's the best. I would worst. assume I would eat it more if I I liked it the best. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? Um, <laughs> you know, I don't think I'll bro, eat Firehouse one time and have it at one. Bro, we used to kill Jersey Mike, you know, and also Jimmy John's to get killed. I don't care what anybody says. You can fight me on this. Jimmy John's is elite subs. Elite. The bread elite. is top tier. It's elite. But is it better Chips. than Jersey Mike's? Chips, Powerade, the experience there is just great. You have all the little quotes on the wall. <laughs> it's such a great experience. You get a chocolate chip oh, cookie if you they want. They have the best chips for sure, Jimmy John's. The best chips it's for elite, sure. It's elite, bro. It's elite. Yeah, it's but I'm going to probably have to go and put them last. They're going to be third for sandwiches. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the engineer at Firehouse is quite, is quite legit. The engineer? <laughs> this man knows the whole menu. <laughs> um, Jersey Mike's, I can't, I can't pick between them, that and Firehouse. I probably would eat Jersey Mike's more often than Firehouse. But I think maybe Firehouse has the best potential in the sandwich. Okay. Um, anyway, all right, last one. Last one. I've made this quick. You've just lost at mini tennis. What punishment? Okay. The punishment. You've just lost mini tennis. Yeah, yeah. Butts up from service line to service line. What? Oh, hell no. What? Okay. You can do a physical challenge. You can run. You can run 400s. Wait, what's the definition what? of 400s? How many 400s? Bro, first of all, one 400 is too many 400s. Go These on, are crazy. These yeah, are yeah. crazy punishments. Okay. And the last one, the, you lay on the floor. You, you're laying on the ground inside the service box. They're at, they're at the net and they have a soft toss. Your hands are covering your eyes. You can't see what's happening. And they toss the ball. And they How many tosses? They want. How many tosses? They get three, three tosses. And they have to toss gentle. Yes, but you can't see it. Your eyes, you cover your oh, eyes with your hands. Brother. <laughs> Who's serving Thanks for at watching. you? Thanks for watching this episode, everyone. Uh, <laughs> It's us three. Let's say us three. No, any of us. That kind of serve. 120 miles an hour. Service line for service line? Hell no. Yeah. There's like a 10% chance of death. Of death. I don't even want to put that one at three. Like, I want to just that one non existent. Like, I will never do that. I probably okay. wouldn't do the toss net, either. Net, net, net defense. Oh, it's a regular oh, Okay. That, regular bus up, I'll put at one. Yeah. First, yeah, easy. Bam. First, <laughs> can we take that one? Um, I'll do the toss and then the four hundred last. Yeah, I'll oh, do that too. Crazy though. Yeah, lock it in. Lock it in. I might agree with that. What do I do? Yeah. All right, that wraps it up. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. I uh, will be back next week. Um, I'm in Jamaica for a few weeks, so I'm gonna try and get. Get an episode in with the fellas, with Zeke, Oscar, Josh, if we can get it to work. Um, There's some match highlights too. And I'm going to get match highlights. Um, but yeah, comment down below if, what you think of the episode. If you like these Zoom ones, we can do them more often. Uh, we just figured that we would try and get guests on as much as possible. If you want guests on Zoom, we can also try and organize that one too. So let us know. But yeah, thanks for watching everybody and see you guys in the next episode.